Today we're gonna make chicken pizzaiola. This one is very, very similar to steak pizzaiola, which we've already made. Right here I have chicken cutlets. These are thin sliced. I'm gonna take these pieces down to about five inches. Flip them all over. And do the same thing on the other side. I have a bowl of flour here. This is just all purpose flour. All right, so you put it in there and just shake off the excess. All right, so the chicken is all done. There it is. And you can just put this off to the side. So for Christmas Eve, we do a lot of seafood. I made that whole Feast of the Seven Fishes series, but there's some people in the family who don't like seafood that much. So this recipe is for two pounds, but you can make four pounds eight pounds very easily, and it stays very moist in the sauce. So uh, I have sterno racks and everything, and I set them up and keep it warm. This is one that is really, really good for that purpose. So I have roughly a pound of mushrooms. I have about half baby bella and half white button mushrooms. You could use any mushrooms you want. Okay, you wanna remove this part right here. So this is where the mushroom is cut and it will always be a little hard. You don't have to cut off the whole entire stem. You don't wanna do that. And then just give the mushrooms a slice, like about, an eighth inch to a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be exact. Here it's the mushrooms. They're looking good and peppers. These are very large. If they were a little smaller in the store, maybe buy three of them and just take the stem out. Okay, and then this white stuff right here, which is a little bit bitter. You can remove a little bit if you want. Uh, you don't have to go crazy. That's pretty much it for prepping. I have basil for the end if we're gonna finish with that. So that's right here. And that's about a quarter cup worth. Really just use as much as you like there. I really love it fresh right at the end. Right here, this is San Marzano, plum tomatoes, whole plum tomatoes. I've been making a lot of pizza lately, so I opened up a bunch of cans, so it's already blender pulse. You can either blender pulse your tomatoes or hand crush them. You, you'll see on most of my videos, I'm always hand crushing them. So do whatever you like. If you like it more rustic, keep them hand crushed. If you want it to be a smooth sauce, Blender pulse it. Don't pulse it too long though, or you'll put air into that and you'll turn them, you'll turn them like almost like a pinkish color. And then also we're gonna use tomato paste. So again, I just I open a can, you save it for a couple days, you can leave it in, in here, just put plastic over it. We need three ounces of tomato paste. So we got everything, let's make it. Okay, about medium high heat. This is stainless. We're gonna let it heat up for about five minutes. We get that oil to skate, and then we're gonna sear this chicken get really nice color on it. It's only gonna take about two minutes per side, about four minutes, maybe five minutes total. All right, I have regular olive oil. You can use extra virgin if you want to. And it's gonna take about Two minutes per side. Wait till they kind of naturally release. They'll kind of just come off. Okay, that one's nice and brown because it's probably, the, it's the center. So maybe the other ones won't be as much. Yeah, like see that? If your thin ones don't get brown, don't keep them in there too long. You don't want to overcook them. So you, even if you don't get that even brown, it's all around. And remember, this is a center heat here and the large pan. It'll still be fine though. And these all look good. About two minutes more, maybe. You could just touch them. They feel very soft right now, so they're not cooked, obviously. And if you're really worried, take your fattest one, 
Get up your fattest pieces and cut it down the middle and then you'll see. Now I'm gonna remove the, the thinner ones are done. You, know, you touch them. That's that's done. Just put this off to the side and tent it. And then I'm gonna put all the mushrooms in. We have a lot of mushrooms here. If you really wanna go through the process of browning them, you don't want this many in the pan. It's gonna take you a lot more effort though. You should brown okay. You can add oil here if you don't need to. First they absorb all liquid, oil and water. And then once they hit that point, they release their water. Once they release their water is when you can brown them. So you'll see right now, it's a very dry pan. You're gonna, you're gonna see soon a lot of water come out. All right, so if you look right here, right there, you can see the water starting to come out of them. Right there, see that? Okay, most of the water is evaporated. You can take your wooden spoon, you can just, any of those brown bits from the chicken, you can scrape up. You could also do this on the next step. You can season these mushrooms a little bit with some salt. Then remove the mushrooms. I'm putting them right back in the bowl that I use. It's clean, it's fine. I'm gonna put the peppers in now. A little bit more oil. And then we'll cook these peppers for about five to seven minutes. Let them soften up somewhat. And I'm on about medium, maybe a touch lower than medium. Put a little bit more oil in too. All right, these peppers are, they got some color on them. Again, it's kind of soft, but they're not there yet. I'm gonna make the sauce now. Before we do that though, let's add the garlic in just for a couple minutes to get a little bit golden. If you wanna put wine in, you can add a little bit of wine here. You could also add water too, just to get the bottom of the pan. Okay, and then the tomato paste. You could also add chicken stock if you don't want to use the wine or water. It's gonna get like very like darkish color, very uh, strong flavor here. Let the paste cook out for a couple minutes, and then I'm gonna add all the tomatoes. Scrape the brown bits off the bottom. Mine's a little towards the blackish side, but I think it's gonna be all right. And that's from searing the chicken. If you're worried about that and there's too much darkness on the bottom of the pan, you can wipe your pan down, you can even clean it, or you can start with a new pan. Okay, bring this to a simmer. I'm lowering the heat. I just wanna bring it to a simmer. One thing you could definitely put in right now is the oregano. So I'm gonna use one and a half teaspoons of oregano in this recipe. And if you want hot pepper, put that in. I'm gonna add a little bit, but that's personal preference. Basically we're making like a, kind of like a pizza sauce for, with uh, mushrooms and peppers for the chicken. All right, do a little taste test. Wow. So a low simmer. I'm gonna be honest with you there. I thought I kind of burned the bottom of there and it was very, very dark. I had the heat up too high because I'm trying to get this recipe done so I can move on to the next one that I'm doing. And I should have went slower there. That being said, it tastes absolutely delicious. It's uh, the tomatoes are darker, darker flavor. Very characteristic of pizza iola, steak pizza iola and the oregano, very, very uh, Italian-American ingredient and really makes this dish that, that unique taste. Take your time, I should take my time more and I'm gonna let this simmer. I want these peppers to soften up a little bit more before those mushrooms go in and before the chicken goes in. And 
and here's all the chicken. Just get it all in there and let it simmer for maybe five minutes to warm through with that sauce. If you think you're too thick, you can add a touch more water. I think it looks really nice on the thicker side. It's gonna coat this chicken really well. This isn't a dish that you really find in, in Italian restaurants. I found it one place I went to, they had it. Normally it's steak pizza iola. And even that steak pizza iola is not necessarily the most popular dish in Italian restaurants. It's more of a popular dish, I think, in Italian American households. So typically that's done with like a cheap cut of beef. And, you know, some places like Rayo's in Harlem, they, uh, they make it a very fancy version where they use a prime ribeye, I believe, and you know, it's like $60 for one person. So that dish really, it was really a peasant dish, but then it became this very, very expensive dish. When you make it with chicken, you're keeping it an inexpensive dish and you're still getting that same flavor from that sauce. It's off the heat, took it off the heat, it's perfect. and a hefty drizzle of really good extra virgin olive oil. So this is the best one. This is the one that I like to use. It's the best one that I have. And I just use it for finishing dishes. I rarely cook with it. You'll smell it right away, the oil, the basil when it hits it. And there you have it. That's how you make chicken pizzaiola. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.